Well, I finally did it. I got off my lazy bum and I installed lights in my display case. Wow, that looks so much better. There's some really good stuff in here, so it deserves a good presentation. And a lot of it I was able to obtain through Bai, today's sponsor. If you go to Bai.jp, you can shop around Japanese websites and stores and auctions, and you can use their interface to buy and bid on things you like. You can shop Japan from home and get these rarities and treasures and just cool things you might be eyeballing. Sign up with a Bai account using the link in my description and you'll get 2,000 yen of free money to begin your shopping. If you're a collector, you're crazy not to sign up. I'm absolutely telling you, you gotta use that link, join Bai.jp, and start looking around. You'll be amazed at what you find. Playtime! Yay! You might have seen a YouTube video or two about Godzilla Lost Media. Godzilla and the Lost Continent, the Godzilla vs. Megalon bumpers with John Belushi, full episodes of Godzilla Kingdom, all the media we hope is out there somewhere, but it might be gone forever. But what about the other end of the spectrum? Media that's really well preserved. Media that's... oddly well preserved. In 1977, Wonderland Records released a vinyl record called Godzilla King of the Monsters, produced by Cinema Sound. It had two original Godzilla audio stories, Godzilla vs. the Alien Invasion, and Godzilla vs. Amphibion. Godzilla had a few of these stories on records in Japan, but this was an American release. And these two stories are better preserved than the moon landing. And I'll show you how, but let's start at the beginning with this 1977 record. I got this at a flea market for $9 and a friendly smile. This artwork might look familiar to you, this is Herb Trimpe's iconic cover for the first issue of the Marvel comic book series Godzilla King of the Monsters, which also debuted in 1977. The back is mostly about Wonderland Records who were in New York City, and their other albums like The Bionic Woman, and I swear I thought that was Fritz the Cat at first. There's a blurb here saying Godzilla is as big as a 30-story building. Imagine Godzilla pitted against Amphibion! I like the quotes, like, look at him fight. Amphibion. Oh yeah, Amphibion. You know what I really mean. In a battle to the death in the mysterious Bermuda Triangle and saving the world from a dreaded alien invasion. What, at the same time? Is Godzilla doing both at the same time? How's he gonna do that? Both stories are between 13 and 14 minutes long. Let's check out Godzilla vs. Amphibion, because even though it's listed second on the art, Godzilla vs. Amphibion is side A of the album. Godzilla, a prehistoric monster born in the modern world. Some say a friend, some say foe. And where will he surface next? I love this Rod Serling intro announcer. Our story begins in the fabled Bermuda Triangle. I don't want to get caught in the Bermuda Triangle waters without daylight. You don't believe those Bermuda Triangle legends, Captain? That guy that sounds like Martin Sheen is Mr. Bishop. He's on a boat with a captain, and they're fishing in the Bermuda Triangle when they stumble across a battle between Godzilla and Amphibion. Amphibion has a back fin 100 feet high, claws like a lobster, and he's glowing like it's radioactive. It's some kind of giant lizard or something, fighting a sea creature. Maybe now you don't think those Bermuda Triangle stories are so funny. These two guys saw a monster fight, and instead of reporting it, they've been drinking. Here, Mr. Bishop, have another drink. You'll be okay. You might assume this album was made for kids, but this ain't Saturday morning, Junior. This dialogue is prime time. Have another drink, Mr. Bishop. I don't want any more! Both stories will wedge in some young characters, and honestly, it sounds like the young actors are reading the lines off the paper for the first time ever. Dad, there's something... something coming out of the water near the boat. Dad, it's a giant fin. There's something else in the water, son. Easy, Pops! So this is Captain Rick Thompson and his son Tommy. They spot Amphibion while returning to an Air Force base, so they go visit their paleontologist buddy Captain Larry Jennings. Jennings refers to Godzilla as a 400-foot playasaur. I thought the Japanese had killed him years ago. Godzilla? Godzilla was a long, dormant playasaur, Tommy, awakened to the modern world by nuclear radiation. They use the word pleosaur a lot on this album. Are you asking me to believe this story about sea creatures and giant lizards? It's a pleosaur, Commander Radley. They went all in on the pleosaur lore. And the lizard was chasing the fin creature towards Miami Beach. Godzilla is a pleosaur, Commander. Whatever, Jennings. 
If you Google Pleasaur, the first hit is a Wikipedia page telling you that you misspelled Plesiosaur. And just listen to this part, because it sounds like the album is about to cut to a commercial. It appears Godzilla is still alive. The next fight takes place around Miami Beach. What's cool about Amphibion is he has his own roar, and he sounds like Chewbacca. Amphibion is Chewbacca. Godzilla has his actual roar, which is a low bar for the album, but thank God. Godzilla kills Amphibion by twisting its neck until it breaks. The narrator doesn't describe the final monster fight. It's more just a lot of explosion sound effects you gotta sit there and listen to until someone finally shouts, Yay, Godzilla won! It's hinted that there might be other amphibians, but who's to say? Where did it come from? I'm not completely sure, Wilson, but the amphibian seems to be a mutant form of an early prehistoric amphibious creature. Well, are there any more like him, do you think? Let's hope not, Captain Wilson. I actually prefer the second story, Godzilla vs. the Alien Invasion. Our story, Godzilla vs. the Alien Invasion, begins innocently enough on a timber barge in the northern part of Lake Michigan. So the story also begins with two guys on a boat, one of which is a captain talking and spotting monsters emerge from the water. This time it's Godzilla and he's just passing through. Some kind of huge lizard. I don't know. It's hidden southwest toward the Wisconsin shore. Must be 400 feet tall. Easy. Obviously, these sailors don't know that Godzilla is friendly to mankind. Obviously. An alien spacecraft hovers ominously over Lake Michigan's western shore. Oh yeah, so not to alarm you, but there are aliens in this story. They plant birth pods in Lake Michigan. Our explorers say the Earthlings call this water body a lake. <laughs> lake Michigan. A typically strange Earth name. Yes, Commander Proton. Like Herb Trimpe, the voice actors in these stories aren't credited anywhere. I don't know who they are, but listen to this song in the background of this scene. Oh, Billy, what a lovely sunrise coming up over the lake. It is beautiful, Linda, but... But what? Look at the morning star in the western sky. Is that a real song? Was it made just for this story? A UFO! We'll need a closer look than this to get convincing photographs, though. That was the news, boys, with their new hit single front page story. Godzilla vs. the Alien Invasion has its own soundtrack. Where are the clean versions of these songs? They're not bad. Two 200-foot sliding green creatures pop out of the lake, followed by Godzilla. So here's my artistic interpretation. The creatures have green arms and red eyeballs, and later they're described as overgrown string beans. It turns out the kids were sent by Dr. Scott. The story's protagonist team is this scientist, Dr. Scott, and the young boy and girl assistants, which is kind of similar to the lineup in the original Godzilla story on the Viewmaster reels, which also used Herb Trimpe's Marvel art. We better alert the authorities. We don't want Godzilla attacked by people who don't understand him. Dr. Scott tries to convince the army not to attack Godzilla, and just then, 20 more string bean creatures appear. The army attacks them, and it's another round of explosions. Just like that, Godzilla has repelled the string beans. And those are your two original Godzilla audio stories. Enjoyable. And if our journey ended here, would anyone really care? Well, in 1998, the album was re-released in a new format, cassette tape. This time, it was released by Drive Entertainment in Los Angeles to capitalize off the massive hype for the 1998 TriStar Godzilla movie. But check this out. This side actually has some context about how this was originally released by Wonderland Records in 1977. And it even says it's not associated with the Sony film. Wait, the 1988 Sony film? Either that's a typo or this tape fell from an alternate universe. This is a cassette tape, kids. 
This format was big for a while. Once again, side A is Godzilla vs. Amphibion, and side B is Godzilla vs. the Aliens. Wait, they changed the name. It went from Godzilla vs. the Alien Invasion to Godzilla vs. the Aliens. Because it's not a real Godzilla story unless it has multiple titles. Cassette tapes were plentiful in 1998, but compact discs were already on the rise, and it's amazing this didn't get a CD release along with the tape release. No, the CD came out three years later. The stories are now on a compact disc, and there's a Godzilla poster inside? Whatever can it be? It's a blown up image of Trimpe's uncredited art. This was released again by Drive Entertainment. Look at this, they actually reused the original blurb from the back of the 1977 record here. They reverted the title back to Godzilla vs. the Alien Invasion. Now things are gonna get weird. Weirder. There are two stories we know very well, but this CD has additional tracks. Is it those songs we heard within the stories? The Newsboys with their new hit single front page story? It has five tracks. Track one is Godzilla vs. Amphibia. Okay. Godzilla, a prehistoric monster born in the modern world. Track two is... Godzilla, a prehistoric monster born in the modern world. Do you know what this two-legged playasaur is? You tell us, Doctor. He's a friendly creature, really. He's just too big for the modern world. Poor thing. <laughs> oh no, some intern slipped his demo tracks on this CD before it went out to market. This track is over eight minutes long. And you know what's crazy? This track actually charted in Iceland. No, it didn't, but you sort of believed it was possible. Track 2 and 3 have their names reversed. We just heard Godzilla vs. Gomi Monster Music Mix. The next track is Godzilla vs. The Alien Invasion, proper. And then... Godzilla vs. Gomi Reprise? There's a reprise? And the reprise is another 7 minutes? He went all in on this music loop. And look, there's a bonus track. What do you think it sounds like? Half of this CD is Gomi's one music loop. That has nothing to do with anything! Also, is the Gomi in question this DJ Gomi? If so, okay, respect. His career is actually impressive. And I apologize if I'm pronouncing it wrong and it's actually Gamai or Gami or something different. Anyway... Here's where the video should really end. But the journey keeps going! This album is available on music sites like Amazon Music, where you can download the stories as MP3s. I did, and they have the titles of the tracks backwards. Why is everything constantly mislabeled now? And over on Spotify, they've got the Gomi remixes, just not the bonus track. Also, both the CD and this list the artist as the Golden Orchestra, which is more of a branding thing that all these types of albums fall under. But let this soak in for a moment. Every major music consumption channel since 1977 had this album. That's 47 years of Godzilla vs. Amphibion and Godzilla vs. The Alien Invasion. 47 years! And you could hear it right now for a few clicks and a few bucks. Now that's preservation, baby! I wouldn't be surprised if NASA started broadcasting Godzilla vs. Amphibion out to neighboring galaxies. In the year 4000, this album will be all that's left of Godzilla's legacy! Did you grow up on these stories? Honestly, I'd love to do an audio story series like this as a podcast. I think there's a lot of people who'd listen to a well-made audio story with giant monsters. But who needs new stories when we can have these two over and over for almost 50 years?!